Now, bringing the sun indoors, like we did with the tubular skylight, is a great idea. But our next project is designed to let you enjoy the sun outdoors, on your deck or patio. Now, since my patio is under a foot of snow right now, I'm heading to warmer parts, Monterey, California to be exact. Here, I'll help a friend build a bench that offers a lot more than just seating. So, what were you thinking about for this project? Uh, we were thinking about a, a bench with planters. You know, we need a little bit more seating. We only have a, a table and chairs here, so we thought maybe a, a planter uh, bench so that people can sit and still have the plants on either side. Okay. That would look nice. Okay. All right, yeah. listen, I want to go make up a little sketch. Okay. And uh, let's, or we'll make it up together, actually, and then okay. let's look at it and see if that's going to fit your needs here. Sounds great. Okay, I got some stuff set up over here. Okay. So I'm thinking, and then we'll put a brace probably right down here. Okay. Yeah, partly. Planter for... benches can come in all sorts of shapes and sizes, so, but I drew up a plan that I thought would, would work be... nicely for Donna. Okay. So this is the bench uh -huh. right here. Okay. And then over here, uh, this is a top view looking down onto this. Right. The bench is in the center, and then on each end, uh, we've added the planter boxes here. Great. You can tell that because I planted some flowers in here. Very for artistic. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. The bench itself is flanked by two end panels that are joined together by boards called stringers or stretchers. There will be two stringers on top and one on the bottom. Seed slats will be nailed to the top stringers. We'll also construct two planter boxes and attach them to the end panels. We're using redwood for the bench and planters, and there's a lot of cutting to do, so I've made a cut list to keep track of it all. I've set up an adjustable stop block on the saw. Since we're cutting as many as 16 pieces of lumber to the same length, the stop block will ensure consistently accurate cuts. After a quick lesson on the power miter saw, Donna's comfortable cutting all the lumber. Cut all these pieces to length. These okay. are all done here now. Right. Now what we have to do is to cut the this notch right here in the end, in each end of these. This okay. notch joint has several advantages. It provides more glue surface than a simple butt joint, makes assembly easier, allowing one piece to nest into the other, and uses more common three and a half inch screws rather than five or six inch long fasteners. So I've made up a little jig here, or template, okay. and it's just a, a block that I've put on here, which means we can push this all the way in until it touches, and then with a pencil, just trace the outline right here. Mm -hmm. And we know that that's going to be the same on every one, right. and then we're going to cut this out. Okay. Donna uses a jigsaw to cut the notch out, and now we're ready to assemble the end frames. <laughs> what we're going to do is attach these with both glue and screws. Um, For outdoor furniture, it's always a good idea to use water-resistant glue. I like to put the glue in a small container and brush it onto the surface. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now drop this in. After applying the glue to both pieces of wood, Donna places the two pieces together. I check them for square, and then we clamp them down. Now uh, we're going to put the screws in. Okay. Uh, first, I want to drill a, a countersink hole or a clearance hole. This is uh, going to allow the head of the screw to be flush with the surface of the wood. I drill the countersink holes, and Donna follows behind with the screw gun. Nice, there you go. That's it, very nice. All right, now that the frames for the end pieces are complete, we're going to fill in the centers with wooden slats, which we'll lay in place temporarily. We're going to attach the slats to this small wooden piece called a keeper. After applying glue, Donna lays the keeper on top of the slats and, using a brad nailer, attaches the keeper to the frame. Now she turns the frame over, applies some glue to the ends of each slat, and lays them on top of the keeper. She uses spacers to distribute the slats evenly and then secures them with brads. There. Now, these are the two end panels okay. that we just made up. Right. I've sort of uh, used some clamps here to allow them to stand up on their own. It'll just make it easier for us to assemble. Okay. And I've also clamped on here a temporary ledger. That's going to help us hold this in place. This is the stretcher or stringer that's going to connect these two end panels. Okay. So if you could take that end right there sure. and just drop it right in on top of the panel. Again, we drill clearance holes with a countersink 
so that the rust-resistant screws are flush with the wood. With the third stringer in place, the bench is starting to take shape. Our seat slats have rounded edges to make them more comfortable. They're spaced evenly, and we countersink the screw holes well below the surface. Okay, now, so We've constructed the sides of the planter boxes the same way as the end pieces for the bench. All we have to do now is attach them together. And uh, I went ahead and pre-drilled some holes here, clearance holes. So we're just going to uh, screw these on the same way we've been doing. Oh, you've got a lot of different size pots there, huh? Yes, I do. But you know, I'm really glad then that we designed the bottom of this planter the way that we did because it will accommodate all different sizes. Oh, yeah? And the way it works is that they have these blocks of wood here, two by sixes and two by fours, and they just set right in here on the bottom of the deck. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, just lay in these planks like this, okay? Like giving it a false bottom or something. Yeah. Okay, there's one last thing I to want to... To keep the bench looking good and extend its life, we'll apply a sealer. A garden sprayer or spray bottle is quickest. Now, I'd let this sit on here about 15 minutes, and then just take a, a rag or a cloth like this and redistribute the sealer. Okay, we're surrounded by beauty. Flowers on both sides of us. Yes. As if on cue, the ocean fog rolls into Carmel Valley just as I'm rolling out of town. My thoughts drift back to Donna's new bench. What was this morning a pile of lumber is tonight the best seat in the house.